Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to my channel. My name is Emily, and for those of you who don't know me, I am a Brit living in Canada. I moved here almost five years ago now. I originally lived in Toronto, and then last year, I moved out west finally to Victoria, which is on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. I mainly make videos about life abroad and what's it like to be an expat living in Canada in British Columbia and comparisons between different places that I go to and travel to. So if you are interested in that kind of content, please don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe if you want to. Today's video I thought I would do because it's kind of a hot topic, especially when we're talking about living abroad and reasons to move abroad. It comes up very, very often, especially in expat communities. When you talk to people and you ask why they moved here, a lot of the times this comes up and I figured, hey, that might be a good reason to make a video. I'm sure that there are many people who are thinking about moving abroad for this reason or who are already moving abroad for this reason, or are just questioning, is it worth moving abroad for this reason? And that is, is it worth moving abroad for love? Or should you move abroad for love? How many times can I say moving abroad in like five seconds? This is obviously going to differ person to person. So I'm going to, as always, just share my own personal experiences. These are just my opinions and my experiences. So take what is relevant to you and leave what isn't. Um, hopefully this helps you out if you're in a similar situation or if you're just wondering what I went through or what my thought process was when I moved here. Now, for those of you who know Mike or who have seen him, you will know that he is my boyfriend. We have been together for the entire time that I've been in Canada and also a bit in the UK too. We actually met in the United Kingdom. He was working there, so was I, and we met just before I decided to move to Canada. Now, a lot of people think that the reason that I moved to Canada was because of Mike, but that's actually not 100% true. I had already had a ticket booked to move to Canada. Originally, I was going to move to Vancouver. And Mike is from Toronto, or just outside of Toronto, which is in Ontario. So although I didn't technically move to Canada for love, I did technically change where I was moving to, and I did end up living in Toronto, in Ontario, because of Mike. Originally, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have moved to Toronto. I probably would have just stayed in Vancouver for a couple of years and then moved on. So although my reason to move to Canada wasn't solely to do with falling in love, it did play a major part in deciding where I was gonna be and how my time in Canada has panned out. I think there are so many things to bear in mind when you're thinking about moving abroad and obviously, this is pretty major if this is one of your reasons. If you are thinking about moving abroad for love, if you have met somebody who lives in a country other than your own and you're thinking, hey, would it be worth the risk? Like, should I do it? I will go through some of the reasons and some of the things that I thought about and some of the things that I would say to others that perhaps were in a similar situation. The first thing is that moving abroad, especially if you're in a new relationship, if you're not already living with somebody in your current country, Moving abroad is an instant commitment. Often you're not gonna move abroad and have two separate places that you're living. You're gonna be suddenly living together. You're gonna be sharing a space. You're gonna be sharing groceries and rents and bills. And if you're not used to that, that can be quite a challenge because not only are you getting used to having somebody in your space, you're also getting used to moving abroad and living in a different country. So that's definitely a factor that I would suggest thinking about. If you're gonna move abroad for somebody, what does your living situation look like out there? Are you gonna live together? And what if so, what is that gonna look like? Do you already live together? Do you already know how it's gonna work out? Jobs, things like that. And also when it comes to living in a different country, a lot of the times it also means visas. So how do the visas pan out? Are you moving to your love's country? So will your visa status be based on them? Visas are a whole different level of stress and a video all on its own. I don't know if I'll ever get into that because for me, my visa process was a long time ago and it was very, very stressful. But that is something that you have to go through if you are thinking about living abroad with somebody, especially if you do require a visa. It's a lot of legal things. It's a lot of very intense paperwork. Sometimes in some countries, it even results in getting married. Luckily in Canada, you can be a common law partner, which is where you have lived with someone for a certain amount of time and 
been in a marriage-like relationship, so you've shared expenses and things like that. And if you are classed as common law, you get either the same or very similar privileges and rights as a married couple does. So we were never kind of forced to getting married, which was great, but I know that some people in some countries are. So again, that is a really important thing to think about. You're depending on the country that you're going to, what kind of commitment do you need to make? The next thing that I think is a really important thing to think about is that if you are moving to a country where your love is from, where your partner is from, if it's their home country and you're moving to it, what is that going to look like? So for me, I was moving to Toronto. I was moving into Mike's world with Mike's family and friends and he knew people, he knew the city. So although it was really, really new to me, I couldn't really share that experience with Mike. I was kind of slotted into an already pre-made life and a lot of times it's really beneficial because you have pre-made support circles you have pre-made friends you can easily kind of get into a life because your other half already has one but sometimes for me personally it kind of felt like i was just slotting into somebody else's life like i kind of had lost my own identity a little bit and it took some time to get over Obviously, eventually we did move out west, which I think for me has been one of the most beneficial things. I think that when you are moving countries with your significant other, if you're moving to a place that is new for you both and you're kind of starting a new chapter of life together, it can be really nice in comparison to just feeling like you're kind of going into somebody else's life. This obviously isn't going to be the case for everyone, but this was something that I personally experienced and it's definitely something to think about. So for us in Victoria and Vancouver Island, neither of us had ever lived in BC. It was very new for us and I feel much happier being here than I ever did in Toronto. And that's not just because of that reason, but it's definitely a significant reason why. It's nice to start a new chapter with somebody who's on the same page as you rather than feeling like there are several pages in front of you, which is how I sometimes felt in Toronto. Even though you're kind of having to start again and make new friends, it's kind of like you're doing it together. And I feel like for us, that really helped build our relationship more. And it was nice to kind of start that again and start that new chapter and have the same experience with your other half and not just feeling like overwhelmed because this is so new and you have to get a new driver's license and a new health card because when I was in Toronto obviously Mike already had his Ontario license and his Ontario health card but here we both had to go through the same process and it was nice to kind of talk to each other and share each other's experiences so I definitely enjoyed moving here more together as opposed to just kind of slotting in in Ontario and again it's not going to be the same for everybody that was just a personal experience and then off the back of that, I think that for us, it was really important to make sure that we both had our own lives. Because often if you are slotting into somebody else's life and you are going into a place that's familiar to your significant other and not to you, sometimes it's just organic how you fold into different friendship groups and you form the same mutual friends and you form the same social circles and you do everything together. Although I think that's really important, for us it was really important to also have our own lives and to have our own experiences so we don't do everything together. So we have separate friends, we have mutual friends, but I don't always spend time with Mike's friendship group. Sometimes he just goes and I have my own friends. I think that was a really important part in moving abroad and I don't think it's something that we really thought about. It's just something that's always been very important to me to feel like I can stand on my own and I have my own life, but we also have a life together. And the fact that we could be individual, but also together really benefited us, especially when I had to move out here without Mike and Mike had to work the summer in Toronto. We were apart for a few months and that was really, really difficult, but I think that it was made better because we already knew how to be individuals. We already did things separately. So it, although it was very difficult to be apart, it was also made a lot easier by the way that we had lived in Toronto. Again, this is very much my own experience so it's not going to be the same for everybody i know that some people are super happy to just do everything together but i think just as it from an expat's opinion someone who is moving to a country where their significant other calls home to have your own identity and to have your own life outside of your other half i feel for us 
was really, really helpful. Another thing I think is really important to think about if you're moving abroad for love, especially if you're moving to a country or your significant other is moving to a country that is yours, whichever country you leave behind, to make sure that you keep traditions alive. And if you're both moving away from your countries of origin or your home countries and moving elsewhere, to bring traditions from both countries to your new life. I feel like not only does this help for home with homesickness for us, but it's also a way of integrating each other's cultures into our lives. I think especially for us when we were living in Toronto, you know, I was very much enveloped in Mike's family's traditions and Mike's friends and things like that. And it was really important for me to bring in even just the smallest of traditions from my own family. And as well, if you can, bring your families together. For us, it was really nice because when my family came over to visit during Christmas time and during Easter time a couple of years, they could spend time with Mike's family and we spent holidays together as a big family. And I don't think that that would have necessarily happened if we'd have both been living and grown up in the UK, or at least it ha wouldn't have happened as quickly. And just bringing those two cultures together and this becoming this hybrid, it's such a nice feeling because it's not like you're taking away from tradition. I think a lot of people get afraid that if you start changing tradition, it's not really the same, but becoming a couple or couples from two different countries and kind of bringing those traditions together, we found has been really, really wonderful. So now we kind of have a hybrid of traditions and we do things from both of our childhoods for all different kinds of holidays. And sometimes we've even brought in our own traditions, ones that we've come up together that have not come from either of our families. Because especially in those first few years when I was living in Toronto and Ontario in Mike's world as I would call it, those little parts of it were really important to me. Just little things like having Christmas crackers at Christmas and mince pies and certain Easter tra traditions and certain things that we would do on birthdays, the way that we would decorate and just little things like that really do help you feel a sense of home. Whether that's you moving to your significant other's country or they're moving to yours or you're both moving to a different country. I think to celebrate all cultures that you are linked to is really, really nice. And it's definitely something that we have adopted and we have found really beneficial. And finally, I think that the one thing that I would say to people, if there was any advice that I would give on this topic, it's that don't overthink it. I think using your intuition in these moments is probably your best tool. I think only you truly know what is right for you and only you truly know what you want to do. If you overthink things like this too much, you can always figure out reasons why not to do something or why perhaps something isn't a good idea. Especially when you're talking to others, you have to remember like everybody's opinions are just their own experiences and you should take, which is why I always say, take from my experiences what re is relevant to you and leave what isn't. Because nobody's experiences or opinions are the same and I think if you overthink it, it's not always going to help you. Obviously planning and being logical is really important, but for me, I found that not overthinking these kind of things and making it so humongous and a big detrimental decision really helped me to just decide what I wanted to do. And like most big decisions I've ever made, moving to Canada and changing where I was gonna live in Canada and moving to, I guess, Ontario for love was solely based on intuition. I didn't ask anybody's opinion. I didn't really care about anyone else's opinion because for me, it's important that I'm doing the right thing for me. And that's the one thing that I would say to you too. Obviously, if you want to look for advice or if you want to ask other people, for sure, but other people can only speak from their own experiences and they're not always positive and based on how they're feeling in current moments. Advice can differ. And sometimes it is what you wanna hear, sometimes it isn't. And sometimes they'll tell you things for your own good and sometimes they won't. But I truly believe that everybody knows deep down what is right for them and what they should do. So I would say if you are in this dilemma or if you are in the middle of this decision of whether you should stay or whether you should go, just base it on your intuition and base it on what you truly believe and what you truly want. It really is different for everybody and although moving countries and living abroad is wonderful and amazing, it doesn't come without losses. You do lose certain things, but you also gain certain things. So that's all I can really say to you. 
I hope that you have found this video helpful. Obviously, again, it is based solely on my own opinions and experiences as to why I decided to move abroad and some of the things that have helped me while living abroad and moving abroad for love. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel. I post videos every single week and liking and subscribing and commenting really helps you push these videos to others that might also be interested too. Until my next one, I hope you have the most wonderful day and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.